Hey folks, you know that problem when you have a polarizer on a wide angle lens and in the blue sky you get that polarization darkening that really makes your sky look weird? Well, stick around because I have a fix for that. So a polarizer is a great filter. I use them all the time and they can create really uh, beneficial effects, not only in darkening a sky and bringing out the clouds, but also in cutting reflections from things like leaves and uh, plants and off the surface of water and even snow and shiny rocks. So there can be a great benefit to using a polarizer in the landscape as well as in the sky. Now, the problem, like we said, is with using a polarizer on a wide angle lens, the polarized area of the sky isn't as wide as the view of the lens. So you often get that dark polarization, kind of a stripe or a blotch down the middle of the sky, and that doesn't look good. Now there are some different things you could do to try to avoid this. For one, you could shoot the image without such a wide angle view. You could zoom in, but a lot of times you don't want a zoomed in view, you want to shoot wide. So you could also do polarizer bracketing. You could take one shot with it polarized, one shot without it polarized, and then try to blend the landscape and the sky later. But that's a lot of work. Sometimes it works better than others. But most often I want to be able to use the polarizer because it is doing helpful things throughout the whole image. If you look at this scene where I didn't use the polarizer, you can see that in addition to the dynamic range not being contained as well, the sky is totally blown out while I'm also keeping the same exposure value for the foreground, but the colors in the landscape and the brightness and the contrast just aren't as good without the polarization. So I want the polarizer everywhere, landscape and the sky. I just want to even out the sky. So here's how you can do that pretty easily in Photoshop. So the very first step is to create a selection of the land. So I'm gonna grab the, uh, the quick selection tool. I'm actually gonna go ahead and make my selection in the sky. So once I have that roughed in sky selection, I'm going to take the inverse of it. So control or command shift and I, and that makes my sky selection a land selection. And then I'm gonna come up here to select, select and mask so I can refine that sky mask. That's now looking pretty good. So I'm going to say, okay. And there is my land selection, which I will save in the channels panel, which I can do just by clicking this button. Or if you're a TK actions user, you can use the red save button right there. And I'm gonna call this my land selection. So there it is, and I can get it back when I need it. But for now, I'm gonna deselect. Okay. The next stage is to create a, just a, a rough drawn in lasso selection for these light areas of the sky. Oh, and if you are a TK Actions user, at the end of this video, I'll show you how you can do the same thing using TK Actions. It works in there, it actually speeds it up a little bit, but I'll just show this using the normal Photoshop functions for now. So I'm gonna grab the lasso, and I'm just going to draw, like I said, a rough selection kind of along the boundary of where it's becoming too light and then down into the landscape here and also same thing all the way across here. And the next step is to create a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And I'm going to set the hue and saturation adjustment layer with that mask to the multiply blending mode to darken. Then I'm gonna blur that mask. So I'm gonna come up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and let's see, 500 pixels, depends on the resolution of your image. I'm actually gonna blur this one a little bit more. I'm gonna take it out to 600 pixels for the radius of the blur and click okay. So already that is helping to darken the parts of the sky where I want it darkened. And I can also, with the controls here for the hue and saturation, I can further work with the lightness 
and the hue to try to get the colors to match. And I can also work with the saturation, whether I want that more or less saturated. Just trying to make everything kind of match there as best as I can. All right, so when that's done, I'm not all the way there. Still a little light here, a little light over in here as well. And it might also be a little too dark through here. So I can work with the opacity as well and try to just get it to blend all the way across there as naturally as possible. Okay, when I've got that done, I will now come in and make a new lasso selection on this side and on this side. And now they're a little more restricted. I'm still looking for where the edge of where it goes from too dark to too light. And now I just repeat the same process. Go ahead and make another hue and saturation adjustment layer. I'll set the blending mode to multiply and I will blur the mask with Gaussian blur with the 600 pixel radius and click OK. And that's looking pretty good. Let's do a little bit of a work with the opacity of the layer. And I can also work with the lightness here and the hue slightly. Okay, so that's looking pretty good overall. The sky was lighter over here because that's where the sun is coming up. So I'm probably not gonna be able to darken that all the way down but everything over here is looking pretty good. I could maybe make one more pass right in there with the lasso. So let's just try that one more right in here. Hue saturation, multiply, blur. And adjust the opacity. Try to get it so that it blends and looks totally smooth and natural there. And get the right hue and the right saturation. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna back off the opacity a little bit. And now I'm even getting to this point here where I've got the center is looking a little too light. So this is where I can come with my lasso and actually even bring in one more selection there. Add that to a hue and saturation adjustment layer. Set the blending mode to multiply and blur. And now back the opacity of that layer way off, but just until everything looks as smooth all the way across as possible. I think that looks pretty good. I don't need to do any more adjustments there. Okay, so now if we take a look over here, we can see I have all these different layers and each one is darkening a different amount of the sky and creating a smooth blue gradient all the way across. So this is what our image looked like without those adjustments and there is with the adjustments. So it's really looking a lot better. The problem is, is that it's overlapping down into my landscape where I don't want it. And that's why we made the land selection before. So the next step is to put all of these adjustment layers into a group. So I select them all and then click on the group button down here. And that puts all of those layers together in this group. And then I can add a white mask to that group and then come down and load my land selection. And I'm gonna go ahead and hide the selection lines because they're just distracting. And then I'm gonna paint with a black paintbrush. So I'm gonna grab the paintbrush, make sure the foreground color is black. Uh, in this case, I'm going to bring my flow up a little bit, opacity set at 100%. And now I can just make passes with the black brush, and I still have that land selection, so it's not going to allow my painting to go up into the sky. And now I can just feather that up so that it looks more natural. Now, along this edge, where that selection wasn't quite finding the, uh, the edge of the mountain, that's an area there where I probably want to use a white brush and a very low flow and just feather that back in a little bit. Just bring those mountains down, darken them in the back and make sure that all blends well. Okay, so now that I have all of those adjustment layers inside this group and the group is masking so it's just being applied to the sky, you can see I'm able to really bring that in and take care of that polarization issue that I had in my sky.
Okay, so now that we have that done, I promised I'd show the TK panel users how you could do the same thing even a little faster and easier with the TK panel. So to do that, here's what we'll do. Well, first of all, I'll go ahead and collapse uh, this group and turn that one off. So that's the one we did without the panel. And it's essentially the same basic procedure. You need to start by making a land selection. That's number one. And now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna grab the lasso tool and I'm gonna create the selection along this edge and the selection along this edge, just like I did before. But now, instead of just immediately attaching that to a hue and saturation adjustment layer, I am going to, first of all, invert the selection. And then I'm just gonna come down to the TK menu here and do a freehand vignette. And it does darken using the multiply blending mode, but it's on a curves layer instead of a hue saturation adjustment layer. But instead of adjusting the lightness of the hue and saturation layer, we could come in and work with the curve itself. And sometimes this is actually a better method. But past that, same procedure again with the lasso. I will make another selection along kind of the edge of where the brightness issue is. Invert the selection and freehand vignette. And it's picking a default radius, 480. I was using 600 before. Anywhere between, you know, 4 to 600 is probably good. I'll just stay with that for now. And again, I can open up the curves and work with that a little bit more. Get that all dialed in. And if I wanted to do one more pass, I could, although with the selections I made in this situation, I almost did better with that one. Although I do have a little bit of uh, being too light right here in the middle. So I'll go ahead and select that and invert and freehand vignette. and then work with the opacity of that. And then once that's all done, I would select them all and click this button to put them in a group with a white mask. And then I would load my land selection by control clicking on the channel. And then I click right here to hide my marching ants. And then I would paint with the black brush up into my landscape here to paint that adjustment out of, or mass that adjustment out of the foreground. So there we go. So I hope that was helpful. Just a quick recap. When you have that polarization issue in your blue sky, you can create lasso selections and then use those selections to create a mask that you then blur and then using either a hue saturation adjustment layer or you could use a curves adjustment layer uh, or you can use the TK panel using the freehand vignette action like I showed. You can then use the multiply blending mode to darken those areas of the sky and with that feathered selection and successive uh, darkening adjustments on different adjustment layers, you can continue to darken those light parts of the sky until it blends nicely all the way across and you have a nice natural looking blue sky while still retaining the, uh, the positive impact that that polarization was happening on the rest of the image. All right, thanks for stopping in and watching this video. I hope it was helpful for you and I look forward to seeing you again next time.